The following presentation of the Daily Mass is made possible by your generous donations to Catholic Television of San Antonio. The Archdiocese of San Antonio and CTSA invite you to join us in celebrating these sacred mysteries, listening to God's word, and partaking of spiritual communion. Welcome to the Daily Mass. and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. At the beginning of the Holy Mass, let us ask the good Lord to forgive all our sins in order to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fall, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. Or may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the holy things to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, If the wicked man turns away from all the sins he committed, if he keeps all the statutes and does what is right and just, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the crimes he committed shall be remembered against him. He shall live because of the virtue he has practiced. Do I indeed derive any pleasure from the death of the wicked? Says the Lord God. Do I not rather rejoice when he turns from his evil way that he may live? And if the virtuous man turns from the path of virtue to do evil, the same kind of abominable things that the wicked man does, can he do this and still live? None of his virtuous deeds shall be remembered because he has broken faith and committed sin. Because of this, he shall die. You say, the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel. Is it my way that is unfair, or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue and commits iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if the wicked, turning from the wickedness he has committed, does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins he commit, that he committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? 
If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Cast away from you all the crimes you have committed, says the Lord, and make for yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment, and whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin, and whoever says, you fool, you will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, Leave your gift there at the altar. Go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you. You will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, today's readings remind us of the importance of conversion. Turn away from sin, iniquity, bad behaviors, vengeance, revenge, anger. Turn away from these things and turn back to the Lord. So what we need to do during Lenten journey, our Lenten journey, is to always be focused on the Lord and His will. That's why it is very important to remember that the Lord never looks at our iniquity like we pray in the responsory psalm. He doesn't mark these iniquities. Thanks be to God. He doesn't hold us responsible, thanks be to God, because he wants to forgive us. So while alive on this earth, we have this opportunity to convert. After death, we don't have control over it anymore. Because after our death, it's only judgment. And that's serious. So in order not to go to Gehenna that the Lord said, we need to behave, do good deeds every single day, an act of kindness, of conversion, of reconciliation, help us on our way, on our pathway to holiness. That's why, dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is teaching us today, before going to Mass, before going to adore Him, before worshiping Him, what should we do? Reconcile. 
with our brothers and sisters. Reconcile. And when we have that reconciliation with our brothers, then we are automatically reconciled with the Lord. So dear brothers and sisters, let us ask the good Lord to help us in our journey. To walk with him. To be faithful to him. To put him at the center of our life. And when we place the Lord at the center of our life, then we will do what the Lord wants us to do. And not what our whims and wants and problems tell us to do. So that's why, dear brothers and sisters, Lenten journey is a catharsis. It's a journey of purification. The fathers of the church calls this journey catharsis, purification. We need to be purified from our sins, from our bad attachments, in order to be detached from the world and attached to the Lord. And when we are with the Lord, everything becomes beautiful, peaceful, and reconciliatory. That's why, dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is always with us. He wants to forgive us. Let us always ask for forgiveness in order to be sons and daughters of the Lord. Amen. Let us turn to our Heavenly Father with our petitions and prayers, knowing that He hears all our prayers. For church leaders, may God provide wisdom and love to guide their actions and decisions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For elected officials, may the Holy Spirit help in creating a more just and peaceful world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in war-stricken lands, may Jesus sustain them and grant them hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this community of faith discerning a vocation to the priesthood or religious life, may God's grace and peace be with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this faith community, May God's love be our guide and we work as we work to build his kingdom on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they soon enter the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, hear and answer these prayers. We ask in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice and your hands. May the praise and glory of his name far better than all the May your merciful grace prepare your servants, O Lord, for the worthy celebration of these mysteries and lead them to it 
by a devout way of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope Gustavo, our Archbishop, his auxiliaries, Michael and Gary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy you may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we bid the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On your day, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your day, qui tolis peccata mundi, Miserere nobis, onius Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, do 
nanobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. My Jesus, I believe all that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you were already here, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your people, O Lord, we pray, health of mind and body, that by constancy and good deeds, they may always merit the defense of your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please help this very important ministry to continue by sending a donation to Catholic Television of San Antonio, 2718 West Woodlawn, San Antonio, Texas, 78228, or contribute online at ctsa.tv.